Hi, everyone. Um, today we have Professor David Simshi Levy from MIT with us. Uh, David is a professor of engineering systems at MIT, and he's also the head of the MIT Data Science Lab. He has done groundbreaking work uh, really in, in many domains, which includes fundamental uh, ones such as optimization and learning, as well as applications to supply chains and revenue management uh, and, and many, many other places. Uh, he has also won numerous awards for his work, including prestigious awards such as the Informs uh, Impact Prize uh, and uh, awards as well for exposition, such as the Koopman Award. Uh, he is the Editor-in-Chief of Management Science and previously played uh, the same role for operations research. Uh, with that, uh, uh, let's welcome David. Uh, Thank you, um, everybody. Thank you, uh, Rajan. Um, happy to be here in this uh, new normal. I was uh, hoping that I can visit uh, in person but given the current situation, um, this is really a nice uh, opportunity. What, what I'm going to uh, talk about is uh, work that we have done recently in statistical learning, but it's appropriate to start by describing the environment at MIT that led to uh, this uh, uh, research. At MIT, I, I lead a data science lab uh, whose objective is to partner with a variety of companies and focus on some of the most challenging problems that these companies have by bringing together data, models, and algorithms. The, as you will see in a second, the Data Science Lab is cross-industry. We have companies in oil and gas, retail, finance, insurance, airline, uh, industrial equipment, as well as software companies. And uh, we have uh, had uh, a global footprint with partners in North America, obviously, Europe, Asia, and Latin America. Uh, example of work that we have done in companies that uh, benefited from this work and partnered with us include uh, work on supply chain resiliency, um, technologies that we developed at the Data Science Lab was implemented by Ford, by Sigma, which is a large, uh, um, manufacturer of food in Europe and Latin America by Schneider Electric. I just recently gave a presentation to industry with the CEO of Schneider Electric. Uh, a lot of work in the space of inventory, transportation and procurement optimization uh, for companies uh, like Home Depot, uh, Mango, which is the, the, the large Spanish uh, fashion retailer uh, work with Accenture both in supply chain resiliency and in this space of inventory, transportation and procurement. But I'm also proud the, with the fact that companies, the software companies like uh, Blue Yonder uh, implemented uh, some of our technology. Work in supply chain digitization for uh, AB InBev, uh, Zelando. Zelando is a large fashion uh, retailer, online fashion retailer in uh, in uh, Europe, uh, price optimization for companies like Rulala, which is a, a, a retailer in the flash sale uh, industry, Groupon. Uh, these are online retailers, but also for uh, brick and mortar retailer like Coppel. Coppel is a Mexican uh, retailer that implemented our technology. Uh, Starwood, which is now uh, a hotel chain part of uh, the Marriott. Um, a work that motivated this talk was around personalized offering in the airline industry and insurance companies. Um, if you fly today in Europe, say from London to Paris, uh, when you buy the airline ticket, we are not involved. But once you purchase the airline ticket, our system, this the MIT system, kicks in and offer you ancillary product, priority boarding, car rental, hotel. And the offer that you will get is different than the offer that I may get. And, and the same technology that was implemented across multiple airline carrier was also implemented in the insurance industry. And then work um, on 
on uh, online uh, resource allocation with IBM and uh, just before the pandemic with, uh, with uh, Alibaba. This talk is motivated by the work that we have done in uh, uh, the airline and insurance industry, focusing on personalized uh, offering. Um, it, it led us to focus on statistical uh, learning. And if you look at statistical learning, there are two major uh, line of research. One is offline learning, and the second one is online learning. In our implementation in the airline industry, we use um, learning on the fly, online learning, to decide what to offer uh, different, uh, different customers. And uh, online learning um, is, uh, is described as follows. In online learning, no data is available at the beginning of the process. Data is generated on the fly as customers, for example, approach the platform and then we make decision one customer at a time. For example, a customer may arrive at Amazon pl uh, platform. Uh, a customer may arrive at the airline platform that I just mentioned a minute ago, or at a healthcare uh, platform. The platform observes the features of the customer, the characteristic of the customer. I will use XT to denote the feature vector. Then the platform make a decision. In the case of the airline, it's uh, specifically what price I'm going to charge you for a specific uh, offer. In the case of Amazon, it may be uh, recommending a product. In the case of uh, healthcare provider, it's perhaps, perhaps uh, personalized uh, uh, medicine. Once we uh, make the decision on what to offer the customer, we observe the reward. The assumption is that the reward is generated by some unknown model. And this reward depends on the feature vector and the decision that we uh, make. I will use F star as the unknown model and we will refer to F star as the ground truth reward function. And the objective in online uh, learning is to design algorithms that will maximize the accumulated uh, reward or equivalently achieve low regret. Regret is defined as a difference between the accumulated reward achieved by a decision maker who knows the ground truth, who knows F star, and the accumulated reward achieved by our algorithm that does not know uh, the ground truth and need to learn on the fly. That's uh, the general uh, challenge in online learning. Offline learning is different. In offline learning, the entire data set assumed to be IID and is available at the beginning of the process. We cannot experiment to generate more data. Given n samples of IID data, each data point is a triplet. It includes a feature vector, the decisions that we made and the reward, given this IID uh, data points, we want to design an uh, offline algorithm that will generate a predictive function f hat such that f hat, f -hat closely approximate the ground truth f star. More specifically, we want to design algorithms such that with limited amount of data, we will generate a predictive function f hat such that with high probability, this predictive function will have low error compared with the ground truth f, uh, f star. The only thing that is not uh, well defined here is how do I measure error? In uh, offline learning, error is evaluated through uh, MSE or the um, uh, mean square error, which is just intuitively the average square difference between the estimated value and the actual value. The specific definition is given here. Now, there are lots and lots of powerful tools for offline learning. And I'll talk about some of them later on. This is not the case for online learning. In the work that we have done for the airline industry, we had to develop 
in each case a specific algorithm for an individual uh, company. And so the first question that I am going to focus on is whether it's possible to reduce online learning to offline learning because if it's possible then i can use all the available tools for offline learning to solve the online learning problem and that's the paper that i'll focus on here uh, we call this paper the title of the paper is bypassing the monster in this presentation i will explain who is the monster and how we can bypass the monster um, in a second line of research connecting online to offline, we are motivated by comments that we heard from many of our partner companies. The partner companies, especially the airline, were telling us the online algorithm are effective, but why are you ignoring the offline data that we have? Why we cannot use it to accelerate the performance of the online learning algorithm. And so in the second line of research, we um, are focused on the question, when the offline data does not help, and when it helps, how much it helps to improve the performance of the online learning process. In this talk, I am uh, going to mostly focus on the first uh, question, uh, is it possible to reduce the general online learning to offline learning? And if it's possible, then uh, we can use all the available technology for offline learning to solve the, the, the online learning pros, uh, problem. So um, I will start with motivation and specifically define the research question, then explain why this is technically uh, challenging highlight the history of this problem. This problem has been open for a long time in the statistical learning, CS, and economics uh, literature, show how we answer this in the affirmative, present the algorithm, show you the theory. Depending on time, I may show the key ideas behind our proof, and then uh, show you that this is not only attractive uh, uh, from a theoretical point of view, this is a powerful uh, solution uh, when performed, when compared with other existing algorithm for this uh, problem. So let me start with uh, uh, motivating the uh, research uh, question and let me remove this comment. So let me be very specific about the, the, the contextual bandit model, this online learning model that I'm focusing uh, on. We will uh, assume that we are playing capital T rounds. In some cases, we know in advance how many rounds we play, but in general, we do not know capital T. At round T, a customer arrive, we observe the feature vector, the context vector of the customer, and we assume that this is generated by some unknown distribution. Given XT, we make a decision. The decision uh, belongs to a, a class of possible K decisions. For example, think about recommending products. These are all the products that are available. Think about price, these are all the possible prices that I'm uh, considering and so forth and so on. Once we made the decision, we observe the reward and we assume that the expected reward, given the feature and given the decision, is generated by the ground truth F star. The only assumption I'm going to make is that F star belong to some class of function big F. And my objective is to focus on regret and to try and develop an algorithm that will minimize uh, total, that will minimize regret. The, function, the class of function F can be anything. We can assume that it's linear, high dimensional linear, uh, maybe non-parametric, perhaps uh, the class of function represented by regression trees or neural network. 
our objective is to develop a general algorithm that works for any class of functions. You decide which class it is, the algorithm gives you a recipe how to uh, perform the online uh, learning uh, process. Why this problem is uh, um, important, interesting, and, and challenging? Because it has two important uh, uh, features. One is what is called a partial uh, feedback. When I observe a customer and the feature vector xt, I can learn only about the reward associated with the decision I made, not about reward associated with other decisions. That's why you need to use this exploration, exploitation trade-off. The second uh, characteristic of this problem that make it attractive is what I call here heterogeneity. The effectiveness of an action depends on the context, but the context space is huge. And I cannot literally learn about the effectiveness for every context. So is there a transfer learning that will allow me to learn from one context on other contexts? That's part of the challenge here. So in some sense, this is a general problem involving both statistical learning and decision and decision uh, making. The literature on contextual Bennett is very, very rich. Uh, the first, uh, in fact, algorithm for uh, this type of problem is Thompson sampling, an algorithm that was developed uh, even before the, ben the name Bandit was used uh, by Thompson for drug testing. Uh, but there are a variety of algorithms for upper confidence interval, uh, Thompson sampling. This algorithm was introduced initially in the 1930s exponential weighting algorithm, oracle-based algorithm, and the list goes on and on. Many, many publications in, in the CS community, statistics community, certainly in the OR community. One reason this problem has attracted a lot of attention is there are lots of applications from recommendation system to wide sharing a platform uh, to dynamic pricing. This is work that I did with two former PhD students Chris Ferreira, who is on the faculty at uh, Harvard, and He Wang, who is on the faculty at uh, Georgia Tech. A healthcare application. So a lot of interest in this problem, both from the practice side, and as I mentioned, uh, we have implemented these types of algorithm um, in the airline and insurance company, but also from uh, different uh, communities. Here are just quickly two uh, examples illustrating why these are relevant to our community. Uh, think about product recommendation. You have K different product customers arrive one after the other. When a customer arrives, we need to decide which product to uh, recommend uh, based on what we learned so far, based on the feature vector of the current customer, and then we observe reward whether the customer clicks and whether the customer purchase and so forth and so on. In personalized medicine, you have K different treatment. Patient arrive uh, one after another. Uh, we observe the characteristic of the, 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 the patient. And then we make a decision on what treatment to give. And our objective is to make sure that we maximize the efficacy of um, our treatment, given the fact that the efficiency is unknown to the, to the learner. So what is the challenge that we are focusing on? We are interested in this uh, problem under the general function class, class F. This is what is called in the, um, this literature, realizability assumption. There are two, in fact, specific challenges that I'm going to highlight. One is a statistical challenge. The statistical challenge is, can we design an algorithm that always guarantee to find the optimal regret, to minimize regret? There is also a computational challenge. Um, we want to make sure that whatever algorithm we, we, we come up with, it's computationally efficient. And I need to define to you, what do I mean by computationally efficient algorithm? But 
the focus is both on statistical and computational challenges. If you look at the existing algorithm, they are either statistically effective or computationally effective, but not both. If you think about UCB and Thompson sampling, these algorithms are computationally efficient, but they do not necessarily guarantee the minimum regret for general function class. They only guarantee uh, optimal regret under some parametric assumption. If you think about exponential weighting algorithm, elimination algorithm, if you are familiar with them, they guarantee to generate optimal regret, but they are computationally completely intractable, inefficient. So what is the research question that I'm going to focus on? Suppose we are given a general function class F, and I give you a few examples at the beginning, right? Um, we understand well the statistical and computational aspect of offline uh, regression. That is to say, for given IID offline data, we know how to find a predictor, remember F hat, such that F hat achieves the lowest possible estimation error or a low estimation error, and we can execute this effectively. Right? And there are a variety of tools to address this. Right? So this is the offline uh, space. As I said earlier, our objective is to see whether we can reduce the online problem into the, the offline regression. Specifically, suppose I'm given this class of function f and an offline regression oracle. So for example, a least square regression, or ridge, or lasso, or whatever your favorite uh, regression oracles that you like um, uh, to use. What we would like to do is to design an online algorithm such that the online algorithm always achieves the optimal regret whenever your regression oracle achieves the minimum, the lowest possible um, uh, estimation error. And we want to make sure that when we do that, we achieve this performance with no more computational effort than just calling the offline regression oracle. Does this make sense? So I want to make sure that I can use the offline regression oracle to address the online problem. And whatever the performance, if the offline regression oracle achieves the minimum possible estimation error, I want my online recipe to achieve the optimal uh, regret. This problem has been mentioned multiple times in many papers in the CS community as an important open problem. And when we started looking at, at uh, that problem, the underlying assumption in this community was that this is impossible. That it's not possible indeed to reduce the general problem that I just described, the general contextual bender problem to an offline regression problem. Surprisingly, in this research, we answer this question in the affirmative. We show that indeed, specifically, you can have a single recipe that allow you to achieve that uh, objective. So let me uh, give some insight why this is difficult. And then what is our contribution? So uh, this, uh, problem is challenging because there are two important statistical problems. One associated with confidence interval and the other one associated with analyzing dependent action or dependent decision. Let me start with uh, the first one. If you think about UCB, you think about Thompson sampling, they work for certain parametric models, right? And they do their job by generating effective confi confidence intervals for every pair of context and decision. Unfortunately, we know from statistics that this is impossible to do for the general class of function F. And, and indeed, Foster and his co-authors in a paper in 2018 um, develop a computationally efficient algorithm based on confidence uh, bound that uses offline regression, like what we want to do, but it works only for certain models. 
because of the challenge that I just described. So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two it has to do with the fact that in the offline learning model, the data is assumed to be IID, but the data in online learning is nothing but IID, right? Because my decision today depends on everything that I learned so far. To overcome that problem, Foster and Racklin, Rack, Sasha Racklin is on the faculty here at MIT, Dylan Foster was his postdoc. He just uh, uh, accepted a position at Microsoft Research. To address this problem, they developed an algorithm just a few months before our algorithm uh, came out, where um, they show an optimal and efficient algorithm using online regression, not offline regression. Now, the beauty of their work and the beauty of using online regression is you don't need to make any statistical assumption about the data. The data can be non-IID, it still works, and it provides statistical guarantees. The problem with their approach is that we have efficient algorithm for online regression only for special classes of function F, right? And for general function class, we don't have effective algorithm. So this is a beautiful approach, but it does not work in, uh, in general. Here is our uh, contribution. We developed the first black box reduction from the online general problem that I described to offline regression. In this approach, we use insight from the original paper by Eben Long. This is an old paper that introduced a randomized algorithm for linear bended. This idea was extended by Foster and Ratlin in the paper that I just men mentioned in the previous uh, slide, as well as another paper by Agrawal that look at the policy uh, space and develop some insight into the problem. We basically show that there is a tight connection between these two lines of research. Our analysis is completely different than the Alan analysis in any one of these uh, papers, but it allows us to basically address the problem and to show that any improvement in offline regression directly translates into the online problem, both statistically and computationally. So to, to put this in perspective, let me just compare our algorithm to um, what appear in the literature um, over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, one of the algorithm, one of the first, it's not the first, but one of the first algorithm for the general online contextual bandit is the regressor elimination algorithm from uh, 2012. It guarantees to find the optimal regret, but it's intractable. Uh, Agrawal and his co-author two years later develop another a variation of that idea. They find the optimal regret for general uh, uh, class of function by making this number of calls, which is great, but to an offline classification algorithm. The problem is offline classification algorithm. Every time you make a call, you need to solve a NPR problem. Rec CB, uh, by Foster in 2018. I mentioned this when I mentioned the first statistical challenge. RexCB make polynomial uh, uh, number of calls to offline regression of calls. This is what we want, but it's suboptimal. It can find the optimal regret only in special cases. Square CB by Dylan Foster and Sasha Racklin guarantee to find the optimal regret by making a, a linear number of calls to an online regression. The difficulty here is that there are only specific uh, function classes for which we have efficient algorithm for online regression. Our algorithm called Falcon, I will explain where the name is coming from in a second, guarantee to find the optimal regret by making log T calls to an offline regression or a call when T is unknown in advance. If T is known at the beginning of the process, we can reduce the number of calls to log log T 
uh, calls to the offline uh, regression. So our algorithm, uh, computational complexity is equivalent to a few calls to the offline regression uh, or where is the monster? Remember, we call the, the, the paper bypassing the monster. Where is the name monster coming from? In the CS literature, monster refer to algorithms that requires enormous, huge amount of uh, computation. And the first people to refer to their paper as the monster paper uh, are these authors. They develop uh, an algorithm that guarantee to find the optimal regret but it requires, according to them, a monster amount of computation. That's why they refer to their paper as the monster paper. Then uh, in 2014, uh, Agrawell and his co-author um, developed a, a, an algorithm that guaranteed to find the optimal uh, regret by calling offline classification or call. As I mentioned, this requires solving NPR problem. That's why they refer to their uh, paper as tamming the monster. Our focus is on an algorithm that allow us to bypass the monster by uh, uh, allowing the user to declare which function class they are focusing on. And um, well, given this function class, we are going to make log t calls to the offline regressor. So what is this algorithm that allow us to achieve this type of result and what kind of result we have? And again, depending on time, I may go through the key ideas behind, behind uh, the, the proof. And, and, and before I go into this, let me just make an observation that I made in some of the meetings that I, there are a lot of work in our community, in the operation management community, where we uh, do the following. And my group does it as well. Uh, here is an interesting operational problem. Let me show you how we can combine CS technology and optimization technology to, to address the, the, the operational problem. Lots and lots of work in this space uh, in, by many, many uh, academics and PhD students. Our paper uh, is an example of the reverse. We are focusing on a CS problem, on a statistical learning problem. And I want to use OR technique to solve the statistical problem. That's really what we are highlighting here. So what is the, this algorithm that we uh, are using to address the challenge? The algorithm has three components. The first is an epoch schedule. We take the time interval and we divide it into sub intervals of increasing length. At the beginning of every sub-interval, I make one call to the offline regression oracle, and I generate a predictive function based on the data so far that I will use in that sub-interval. But when I'm in the sub-interval, I'm not going to use the predictive function in a greedy way because my, maybe the predictive function is not appropriate. I'm going to use a randomized algorithm. And the original idea of randomized algorithm is not ours. It was initially by Ebb and Long. Our randomized algorithm is a little bit different, but the key idea of applying a randomized algorithm initially for linear bended was from this paper. We generalize this and it applies to general class of of function. So let me go now to the detail of the, the, the algorithm. But before that, um, what is FALCON? It stands for FAST, least square regression oracle for contextual bended. And we like this name because of its associated with this FAST animal um, that uh, uh, my student and I uh, have used to, to coin our algorithm. So let me explain the three components that I described. The first component is an epoch schedule, right? We take the time interval and we divide it into sub intervals um, when we don't know t at the beginning of the process using a geometric se uh, sequence. And so in this case, we generate log uh, t uh, sub interval. 
If we know T, we can reduce the number of uh, subinterval to log log of, uh, of T. But now notice that the length of the subinterval is increasing as we move from epoch to epoch. I am going to call the um, offline regression oracle only one time at the beginning of every subinterval. This implies that the oracle is called less and less frequently as uh, the time proceeds, right? That's the first component. The second is thinking carefully about the oracle. We allow the user to use a least square to generate uh, a predictor FF or um, um, Ridge or uh, Lasso, depending of course on the application. But once we generate the predictive function f hat, we are not going to use it in a, in, in, in a greedy way because it's not clear to us that f hat correctly represents the ground truth. And that's where we need to apply an exploration exploitation uh, strategy, right? A greedy action may lead to a poor performance. So the question is, how do we randomize here? And that's uh, the sampling rule that I'm going to introduce. In this sampling rule, at the beginning of every epoch, for example, epoch M, I determine a learning rate. Just by inspection, you see that as I move from epoch to epoch, I increase the learning rate. Then at round T in uh, this epoch, I observe the context. Here is the context of the customers that just arrived. My predictor generated by the Oracle at the beginning of the epoch is F hat M, right? A hat is no more than the greedy action. If F hat was true, A hat would be the best, the best action. But we don't know that F hat is true. And so we are using uh, the following randomized algorithm. We will choose an action A, not the greedy action, with probability, look at this, inversely proportional to the gap between our predictor at the greedy and our predictor at action A. So think about this as exploration step. And we will use the greedy action with the remaining probability. So notice that I'm controlling the exploration exploitation. This is the exploration. When I use the greedy action, it's the exploitation. I'm controlling the exploration exploitation trade-off by focusing on the learning rate. The learning rate is increasing as I move from epoch to epoch. This implies that as I move from one epoch to another epoch, I start increasing gamma M here, which reduces the probability of not selecting the greedy action. Does this make sense? So as we increase uh, the learning rate, we decrease the probability of selecting the non-greedy uh, action, right? What can we show uh, about uh, this algorithm? Let me decouple the result into two steps. The first is, uh, let's assume that the class of function F, big F is a finite function class. Then we show that this algorithm Falcon guarantee an expected regret no more than a constant times square root of K T log of F using log T call to uh, a least square regression oracle when T is unknown in advance. If T is known, we can reduce the number of call. The beauty, one second, the beauty of this uh, result is that uh, there is um, a matching lower bound that was obtained in a paper by uh, Agrawal showing that our algorithm is optimal. Yes. Um, do you always use that same learning rate? That's that's the square root of the time. I, I use uh, this. Yes, this for, is the general per, for any class of function. OK, that's the, always the same. That's all. The constant is different. The constant is different, if that's what you are asking. 
you, how do you, you determine that? Is, is that so uh, we, we give a formula to determine the constant. I see. Okay. We, we, we give, but the rate, as you are pointing out, as a function of the time, always the same. Okay. Thanks. So, so in a case of find that uh, uh, function class, the algorithm guarantee to find the optimal region. Now, of course, the question is what is the situation under general function class? So to answer the question for general function class, let me start with what we have. What is the assumption on the offline? And then what can we say about the online? So remember our starting point is um, offline guarantee. So given an IID samples and an offline regression or called the return an estimate or a predictor F hat, such that the, the mean error is bounded by E of R. So think about E of R as the error guarantee. And it depends of N, of course, the sample size and the, the function class F. Given this, we show that uh, with an offline regression oracles whose estimation error guarantee is ER, Falcon guarantee a regret no more than square root of K times the estimation error times a T. And again, using log T calls um, to the offline regression oracle if you don't know T in line. The beauty of this, why this was exciting, because there is a matching lower bound in the following sense. When ER is a possible estimation error, we know that there is a matching lower bound. This implies that whenever the offline regression oracle find the lowest MSE, our algorithm finds the optimal regression. So we made a direct connection between the performance of the offline oracle and the online recipe that I just, uh, that I just uh, described. Let me just show a few examples of uh, what are the implications of these results. Um, for, for instance, if F is linear with uh, dimension D, we know that least square estimate or guarantee an error proportional to D over N. Our algorithm provides therefore a regret proportional to square root of kt d plus log d. And this is the best known uh, result, at least when we wrote the paper um, uh, in terms of uh, a function of t. When f is linear with dimension d and sparsity s, um, we know that Lasso guarantee an error uh, proportional to s log d divided by n. Our algorithm therefore guarantee a, a, a regret no long no larger than a constant time square root of k s t uh, log of d you can apply this when f is neural network you can apply it when f is a general generalized linear models i'll show you some of the extension of our results that was obtained by other people uh, from a variety of places um, to other settings but that's basically the initial, uh, the, the key result that we have. So now I have about 15 minutes. I want to briefly give you the idea of the proof. And, and I will just talk about three steps in the proof and then go to computational result because I want to show that this beautiful thing that we are all working on can be attractive uh, from both theoretical point of view so amazingly enough, computational point of view. So uh, remember, translating estimation error, estimate, offline estimation error to the online problem is a challenge because the data in online is not IID. And second, the, the, the performance measures are different. In, in, in offline, we are looking at estimation error, MSE, in online, we are looking at it's not clear how do you connect it. So our first step is what we call a dual interpretation. Think about this as a relaxation of the problem. What we do instead of focusing on the function space, we move to a policy space. What is a policy space? In a policy space, 
a policy is a recipe that for every context tell you what decision to um, to make of course the policy space like when you do relaxation in linear optimization is enormous right but it allows us to get some interesting characteristic of the problem i will use pi f star to be the true optimal policy associated with the ground truth f star i will use pi f hat m to be the greedy policy associated with the predictor generated in the m epoch you notice that at epoch m our predictor f hat and our learning rate gamma introduces a distribution of the policies. What is this distribution? This distribution is, diff is um, the probability that the sampling goal, right? The randomized algorithm select an action pi x given a context x, right? This is defined by the mechanism, by the recipes that I just described. So here are the three steps in our proof. The first step is a little bit imaginary. Forget about F star, the ground truth. Assume that the predictive function F is the truth. Let's see what regret we can get under our randomized algorithm with F hat, right? And you notice what I have here. F hat, this part here where my laser pointer is, is the best reward if f hat was true. Um, f hat, the second component, is the reward that we get when we apply our algorithm and it generate a policy pi x for context x. So if you think about this, this is just our expected regret if, this is not the case, but if f hat was the ground truth, right? And we show that this value is bounded by something proportional k. k is the number of decisions divided by the learning rate. The second step is to connect regret associated with f star to regret associated with f. -A. So what we show by induction is that for every policy, nothing to do with our sampling algorithm. And that was really the main step in the proof. What we show is the following. If you look at the left hand side, this is the true per round expected regret, right? Because this is the true reward associated with the best policy. This is the reward associated with some policy. The right hand side is the imaginary regret associated with F hat. We show that the true regret is no more than two times the imaginary regret plus some errors. Combining step one and step two give us the, the result. Why? Because from step one, we have the true expected regret is bounded by two times the imaginary expected regret plus some error. And from step one, I know that this imaginary regret is bounded by this error. So the final step was to select specifically what the learning rate should be to give us a result. I should emphasize that the entire paper really relies on this piece that I think is a beautiful proof. And in fact, if you read some of the follow-up papers that I will mention, people refer to this as the main breakthrough in, in our paper. And the reason this is a main breakthrough is because it connects the, the ground truth with the imaginary, with the predictive function. And it does not require any assumption of IID on the data. The only IID assumption we are using is the, 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 the um, IID assumption on the distribution of the context. Other than this, it's a bridge between the imaginary world and the true and the true world. Let me make a, a few observations. Our result is uh, holds even if um, the user in the offline setting is not focusing on MSC loss function, but strongly convex loss function. Um, 
we need to compare our algorithm with that of square CB from Foster and Rackley. Remember, square CB uses online regression oracle. The, the beauty of online regression oracle, you don't need this assumption of IID feature vector. We are using the assumption of IID. But the problem with um, using online regression oracle, the, uh, there are efficient algorithm only for special classes. Whereas uh, for the case of our model, there are many efficient algorithms. The second advantage of, of Falcon is in square CB, you need to apply the online regression oracle after every arrival. This is not well suited for some application like healthcare application where there is a delay in observing the reward. Remember, we apply the offline regression only at the beginning of an epoch. So you can wait until the end of the epoch, observe the result, and then apply uh, the, the algorithm. So let me uh, quickly show you that this is not just uh, pure and beautiful theory. This is powerful uh, in practice. So we tested the algorithm on um, um, three types of problems, classification problems, recommendation system, and price optimization. Um, the classification and recommendation data set we took from uh, uh, Microsoft and Yahoo public data, 10 classification problem and two um, recommendation problems. Just uh, for those without um, detailed background in classification problems, these are really fundamental problem in machine learning. You may want to use this type of algorithm to, for handwriting recognition, face recognition, uh, um, identifying cluster and customer groups. Um, the way we here define error when the customer is classified correctly, the loss is zero, when you make a mistake, no matter what the mistake is, the loss is, is one. Recommendation system is all about predicting the rankings that a user will give a specific product. Um, when a customer arrives, we want to recommend the product that they like. If we recommend the product that they rank high, then we incur small loss. And otherwise, there is a huge loss. These are everywhere. Amazon is using them. Netflix is using this type of algorithm, Google is using. So we have rich data set that we can use. Uh, we compared our algorithm against eight existing algorithms that we took basically from um, an open source library, VW. Uh, the algorithm just briefly is greedy. Uh, you just use a greedy action, epsilon greedy with certain probability uh, you use the greedy, otherwise you uniformly select. This idea is to explore and exploit, like what I described earlier. Two version of the algorithm from Tumming the Monster, two version of Thompson sampling, and then the best algorithm in computational experiment until we test the, our algorithm uh, came to life is RexCB, RexCB elimination and optimistic. Remember, RexCB was developed by Foster in 2018. It's computationally efficient, but it's not does not guarantee uh, uh, optimal regret for all settings. Um, so I, we want to see how we are doing relative to all these algorithms. So remember, there are twelve uh, uh, data sets that we are testing. This is what is called in this uh, literature win loss difference. Let's forget about algorithm. Forget about our algorithm. Just look at the eight algorithms that I mentioned, and we compare each of the existing algorithm against all the other existing algorithm. If you look, for example, at comparing back greedy to greedy, there are 12 sets. We uh, identify how many times, how many data sets uh, back greedy was better, let's say six data sets, statistically was better than greedy. How many times, how many data sets greedy was better? Let's say two, right, statistically better. And the other statistically we cannot say. So we count six minus two or the win loss is four. And you can see here that when you look at the win loss difference, we report the same thing that was reported in the literature. Greg CB are doing uh, very well. Either elimination or optimization, our test optimization did 
optimistic, not optimization, did the very best. Now, at the bottom here, you have our algorithm. Because our algorithm is so general, I can test three variations. Falcon one is assume linear function class and apply least square estimate of. Function two, assume linear and apply reach, which is, right, a variation, adding a penalty. And Falcon three, assume a more general class of function, a regression tree, and apply gradient boosting. And you can see that our algorithm, our, the three version of our algorithm, they are doing very well. But in particular, Falcon three uh, never loses uh, in all the experiments that we have done. Now, we also tested it on dynamic pricing. We got data from Columbia University Center of Pricing and Revenue Management. Uh, these are auto loans. There were 200,000 uh, arrivals. Uh, for each one of them, we know whether the customer made a purchase. Each customer has more than 100 features. We uh, identify the five most important features to focus on. And then we tested we focus on cumulative revenue with two settings. One, when there are 15 prices and the price range is from 500 to 7,500. And the other one, 10 uh, uh, price choices and the price range is 1,000 to 10,000. Uh, very briefly, you can see the result here. Um, at the, in, the, in the table, you can see the eight algorithm reporting the average uh, uh, revenue, and here is on the right hand side Falcon. When I apply here Falcon, we assume linear revenue function as a function of price. So many of you are jumping, why are you using linear? A very good question. But you can see, even when I use linear function class and least square, we are doing extremely well. And you can see setting one and setting two, the revenue is, is, is better. But for us, the question was, why assume linear? Revenue as a function of price is not linear. And so we tested three settings, linear and function class in least square, linear in reach, and assume general function class like regression tree and gradient boosting. And you can see we are doing way better. Yes. I had a question about the algorithms on the previous slide. If you could switch back to that. Are, are, any, are any of those, um, you have this interesting exploration idea where you choose a suboptimal uh, one according to the probability of being off of the of the revenue being less are any of these similar to what you might get if you yeah. chose the greedy optimal answer but for a subset of randomly sampled subset of the data yeah. each time is that bagging or something exactly that's and, what the, and... that's what the bagging exactly. idea is exactly exactly so you beat that one as well exactly wow exactly. So let me uh, just uh, summarize um, with a few references and follow up work. The original paper where this result was reported, bypassing the monster, is, uh, was accepted in Maso for Um Immediately after our paper was, was uh, uh, posted online, we started collaborating with our colleagues at MIT, Sasha Rackling and Dylan Foster, and we extended the result that I just reported from mean max regret to instant dependence regret, but also to reinforcement learning. This paper uh, appeared in Colt uh, this year. And then other people extended our result. Uh, people from Columbia University extended our result. Uh, remember, we are assuming finite action. They extended our result to infinite action. People um, uh, from Stanford, this is uh, Susan HT uh, group extended the result to misspecified model. People from um, USC extended the result to non-stationary uh, bended. And people from Amazon and other uh, uh, researchers from other institutes extended the result for combinatorial action uh, space. The key idea in, in most of this paper is this step two that I told you, right? This step two that connects the imaginary world with the real world, with the ground truth, is the beautiful idea, in my opinion, in, in, in our paper. Let me pause here uh, and, and see if there are comments. Obviously, I did not get a chance to talk about the second part. Thank you, David, for the very wonderful talk. Uh, so questions, anyone? Uh, 
just uh, unmute yourself and, and uh, ask. If anybody is interested in um, the papers, the original paper, the extension to reinforcement learning, just uh, I'd be happy to share everything we have. Uh, so, uh, David, I have a quick question. Uh, that uh, so, so in terms of the, you mentioned that different uh, function classes, right? That uh, you know, starting from the linear with high dimensional and the linear with sparsity. So, what what was the the most complicated uh, function class? You, know, you mentioned this neural networks. Have you tried that or some? Yeah. So, in neural networks, there are a couple of results in the offline learning, and we apply our algorithm, right? Um, in the online learning to show. Um, so in, in neural network, the result that we know is something like the mean estimation error of one over, one over square root n. And so if you apply our result, you get t to the power of two thirds. I see, I see. So, so the beauty of this, Gio, is that these work across function classes. And neural network is really the most interesting one that we had in mind, exactly your question. Got it, got it, thank you. And, and also that uh, follow-up question on this, that exactly on this page, I was uh, you know, going to ask that, uh, you know, how this would extend to the non-stationary contextual bundles, but I guess that paper sort of answers that extension. Exactly, this, this, this. remember uh, we did with another student, the non-stationary, but they build on our idea and extended it to non-stationary. Got it. Yeah. Very nice. Guys, uh, thank you so much. For me, it's now 7.35. I enjoyed this tremendously and I'm sure I would have enjoyed it even more uh, being on campus, hopefully next time. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank, thank you, you, guys. David. Thank you, thank you.